up guys welcome back to another episode of outdoor chef life today i'm going for uni it's a nice low tide today it is about a negative 0.5 low tide so that's perfect for gathering some delicious sea urchin all right so we're going to get to that right now let's do this all right so we're going for these guys right here these purple urchin and i figured this time of the year is probably about the last time that I can go for sea urchin. Goddamn. Whoa. Whoa. Look out that way too. All right, so before I pick a bunch of them, I'm gonna just uh, crack one open and see what it looks like inside. It looks good. Oh yeah. Looking, oh, looking really good. Hi guys, well there it is. The uni, the yield is a lot right now. But the thing is, I was saying that it's probably one of the last times you can do this uh, until next year. Maybe we'll have to wait another half year or so. Look at that, that's a pretty good yield. But check this out, the uni right now, you see how it's melting? You see that right, right there? It's kind of melting away and most of the uni is going to be melting like this and the reason for that is that they're they're spawning right now so most of the uni is going to be melting like this you can still eat it but it's not like the best quality you know but it's still good let me give one of them a try mm, still sweet very creamy once these guys spawn all the edible portion will be gone because the part we eat are the gonads. Everybody knows that, right? We're eating the gonads of the sea urchin. And the sea urchin we have around here spawn this time of year in the winter. So after winter, all, all the sea urchin are gonna just be empty inside. All right, so that's why I say this is probably one of the last times that we'll be able to harvest sea urchin until probably uh, summer summertime then they'll start growing it back again uh, to an edible size and it'll be much better in the fall all right and then in the winter time they're going to be kind of melting so check out how many there are here plenty of sea urchin there's a pretty big one right there i don't know if you can see that It's a good low tide today, but the swells are still pretty big. We got all this sea urchin exposed, but you gotta make it quick. The waves just come rushing in. If it was a calm day, it would be so easy to pick these sea urchin. All right, this is a pretty good size, about a palm size urchin. Yeah, this is a decent size, and the row should be nice and big in there, as long as it hasn't spawned yet. a little safer on this side so let's see if I can find any bigger ones here there's plenty everywhere that's a good one decent sized ones here in this little protected area. See, this area is a little protected. Yeah, we got a lot. Jocelyn got a ton of them. All right, in about half an hour, we got a half a bucket full and this is plenty. So we're gonna go make something now. 
Mm, smells good, like, it really smells like sea urchin. There's some decent sized ones in here too. Like this one's not bad. Pretty good for a purple urchin. In California, you have two species of sea urchin, purple urchin and the red urchin. Um, and the ones that are the problem is the purple urchin, these ones here, all right? And these are mainly the problem here on the Pacific coast. Uh, but the red urchin, which grow to uh, maybe three times this size, they're not the problem. So if you care to help, help out the environment a little bit, help out the abalone population and the, uh, and the red urchin population, harvest these purple urchins, all right? The red urchins are not the problem, it's the purple ones. All right, we're gonna go make something now. Let's do it. All right, now I'm gonna make some rice and we're gonna prep the sea urchin. It's quite windy again. I'm just gonna start cracking them open. These look pretty good, check them out. It's much harder to handle uni this time of year because they're very uh, delicate. They just kind of melt. And this is just salt water that I just grabbed from the tide pool. Always want to use salt water. So check this out. Okay, you see this uni here? You see how it's very melty, but it's also white. It's this white stuff that's coming out. And some of them will just melt like and it'll just be yellow, right? But this one is white. So there's only one way to tell um, the sex of a sea urchin. There are male and female sea urchins, but there's only one way to tell and this is the way. When you crack it open during spawning season, if it melts white like this, look the inside of this. If it melts white, then that's a male because that's the sperm coming out of that row. And if it melts, just melts uh, yellow, then that's the female. All right, that's only one way to tell. Um, by looking at it, you can't tell if it's a female or a male. There's no way to tell. They look exactly identical. In about a month or so, all this uni will probably be empty inside since we're eating the gonads of the sea urchin. Afterwards, after they spawn, and there's nothing inside, nothing left, because uh, they spawn, they release all their eggs and sperm. So if you wanted to collect sea urchins again, you would have to wait until probably summer for there to be a decent yield. And just clean it out a little bit more and then throw it in this uh, bowl of salt water as well. Final cleaning. Look at that, look how, <laughs> look how <laughs> spermy. <laughs> The water is turning creamy. Oh my god. <laughs> so there's some nice ones, some not so nice. So the nicer ones, I'm gonna save it off to the side. And everything else that's kind of melting, I'm gonna put underneath. I have a few pieces of shiso and these nicer pieces I'm gonna put in the middle. All right, there you go. There you have it. Just nice bowl filled with fresh uni, as fresh as you can get it. It's very, very creamy right now. You can see it melting on the rice already. It doesn't look 
like the best quality uni but it's still gonna be delicious all right all right i got some soy sauce here i'm gonna put some of that right on top Ooh, it's gonna be good i know you uni lovers would love this because <laughs> it's just straight uni all right i'm gonna take my first bite super creamy it makes the rice just like a creamy rice it's like those food travel vlogs that you see when people go to like hokkaido to japan and get get a bowl of rice topped full of uni it's exactly the same mm. Mm -hmm. that is so creamy all right let me try the next bite with some shiso Mm. Wow, <laughs> that is super creamy. That is so good. The flavor is a little more mild, I think, right now uh, than usual, but it's still so good. Mm. Mm. I could just leave it on my tongue and it'll just melt away. Amazingly delicious. And uh, Jocelyn doesn't want to eat any. You don't want to try any? No, I'm not a big fan of uni. All right. Especially not by itself. Maybe uni pasta. Look at that uni mess. Oh, ready? Ooh. Mm. Mm. I really love the shiso with that. Mm. I'm just gonna mix it, mix my rice, mix it up, and just have this uni rice. Oh man, look at that. Yeah, and what do you think? If you bought this at a restaurant, hmm, the amount of uni I used, let's say, all right, an average sushi restaurant, say if you order something like this, uh, it's gotta be, it has to be like 80 bucks at least. Hmm. Mm. And of course, in a restaurant, it would never be as fresh. And for uni, freshness matters most. It's straight out of the water an hour ago, and now I'm eating it all. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this beautiful sunset we have here. Man, the view is amazing. The food is delicious. How can it be any better than this? Wow. Done. That was good. And this is probably the last uni episode until maybe next summer. I know a lot of my viewers like these uni episodes, so I wanted to do one more before all the uni was gone. Well, not gone. They'll still be there, but all the all the inside will be gone if you like this video make sure to hit that thumbs up subscribe and see you guys next time peace